Hello guys and welcome back. In this episode we're going to be talking about how to achieve a more masculine face and how to do that in around about roughly nine steps. So step number one, and th let me let me pull this over here, this will be easier. Step number one, and this is going to be really obvious, is to grow a beard, right? I'm not going to spend much time on this. If you can grow a beard, great. If you can't, you know, tough luck. There's eight more points on here. But a beard will make you look a lot more masculine. Think of somebody like James Harden. You know, without the beard, he looks like a little boy. With the beard, looks like a very strong, masculine man. It helps. Do it. Um, number two is to get your body fat down. Now, everybody knows that the less body fat you have, the more shredded your face will look. You know, there's other ways to do it, but that's, you know, the main one is that you drop that body fat, your face is going to look more pronounced, especially features like cheekbone, jawline, you know, your brow line, things like that. You're going to look more defined, your face is going to look more masculine. You know, it's a very masculine trait to have pronounced features. You know, women have got more oval faces, men have got squared faces, and you can see every feature popping out. So if you can get your body fat down and you can grow a beard, you know, these are very generic two the rest are going to be very specific but those two to start you off get your body fat down grow a beard if you can if you can't you know one, well, one of them you'll definitely be able to you'll definitely be able to drop your body fat there's no excuses there but if you can't grow a beard you know the other tips are really going to help you guys so it's, it doesn't matter too much okay um the next one is higher cheekbones now we discussed this so a lot of people don't know about something called orthotropics. I've done a documentary on it. I interviewed Dr. Mike Mew, who's kind of the founder of this, or at least his dad is, but he's really brought it, brought it forward. Um, your cheekbones here are connected to a giant bone in the middle of your face, which connects to here, all the way down here, and up here slightly, and it's called the maxilla bone. It's gigantic. You can search it. M-A-X-I-L-L-A, -L -L -A, I believe. So have a little search for that. And um, it connects the whole face together, especially the cheekbones. Now, the higher and more forward that this is, the more pronounced your face is going to look, the better your features are going to look. So attractive people have a high maxilla that is tilted forward, so it gives them that kind of protruded look, which we'll get to in a minute. But with the cheekbones, what you want to do in order to push this forward is most people are sat using technology all day. For example, they're on their phones, they're looking down, they're like this, they're watching TV, their mouth's open. And then what happens is that the maxilla bone has zero support, like scaffolding on a building. So that scaffolding comes from your tongue. So if your tongue is on the roof of your mouth, which we call the palate, it's going to drive the roof of your mouth upwards, as in the maxilla bone, is going to drive that upwards and forwards, and it's going to give it that kind of forward tilt. And what's going to happen is, consequently, the cheekbones are also going to go upwards, more forwards, so they look more prominent, and they're going to go out in that V shape to give you more prominent cheekbones, which is then going to give you this sexy masculine line down here, which connects everything together, um, which is a very, very rare feature. Um, now, in order to do that, like I said, people are sat there watching let's say tv for hours on end with their mouth open people are looking down at their phones they're using laptops on the train you know their faces are just down like mush all the time they call it tech neck the other point i want to make is that your jawline is weak and when you've got a which we'll get to in a minute but when your jawline is weak it's a lot easier for your mouth to fall open so it's impossible to keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth when your mouth is open so as long as your jaw bone, as long as your jaw muscles here are strong, your mouth is always going to be closed, especially when you're unconscious, like when you're sleeping, which is, you know, seven, eight, nine hours a day, or when you're watching TV or looking at your phone. This is going to be doing the work for you. So if your mouth is, if you've got weak jaw from various multiple areas, which I'll talk about in a minute, but if you've got a weak jaw and your mouth falls open, then your tongue is going to fall off the roof of your mouth and your maxilla bone is going to fall down, cheekbones are going to fall down. It's going to make you look like you've got a mushy face, which, you know, is the least masculine thing that you can have. Well, the second least. I'll get to the least in a minute. Um, so you want to keep this strong as well so that your mouth can stay closed, your tongue can stay on the roof of your mouth, and you can drive your maxilla bone upwards and forwards, consequently making your cheekbones higher and more pronounced. So the next point is, and it ties together is a wider and more protruded jawline um so i've got it here wait there this stuff i don't know which camera is easier to see it on this stuff here mastitha gum is solid as a rock let me see if i can show you 
you get a good decent piece I don't know if you can see that piece there guys look I'm trying to there we go I'm trying to crush it with my fingers it's very very hard to do when you chew on that what happens is you're going to build your jawline up this is going to get stronger and as we discussed in the previous uh, point about the cheekbones once this is stronger your mouth's going to be closed more chance that the tongue's going to be on the roof of the mouth and I mean not just like that not just the front of the tongue you need that posterior third the back part of the tongue to be driving the maxilla up and forward um, and the tip of your tongue should be on the pulp they're just there just behind your teeth just behind the front two teeth it should relax up there and then the rest of the tongue should be pushing the maxilla bone forward apologies if you can see me sweating it's like 36 degrees today which for you americans i think is about just away from 100 um so you've got to drive it you got to drive it up like that and that'll help by strengthening these two and what will also happen as your maxilla bone goes forward this acts like a hinge so your jawline acts like a hinge so this will, the maxilla bone go forward and the jawline will follow it and it will close like a door hinge. This is what Mike Mew told me. So the maxilla goes forward, the bottom jawline follows and they've got to connect together. That's what they've got to do. The teeth have got to connect together. So when, when this swings forward, you're going to have a more solid protruded jawline and this is going to be wider too, which is going to give the impression, well, it's going to naturally give you a much stronger jawline, which is you know, exactly what everybody's after here. So that gum is amazing. That's Mastitha gum. If you use that, it's so tough. I'd maybe recommend using softer gum to begin with. I think Falim gum does the same thing. And then move on to that stuff because you chew that two, three hours a day, it really hurts. And also, guys, what I found is when you are chewing, I don't know if you can see, if I can just do a chew motion, watch here and watch here. Maybe I could have zoomed in in editing. I'll see if I can do that afterwards. But these areas here, when you chew, they get, you know, they're moving a lot. You've got big muscles here on the side of your head and around about here, you know, around about this area. You've got lines in your skull and muscles. And if you chew a lot, they become more pronounced. And if you've got long hair, obviously you're not going to see it as well. But if you've got short hair, which is a point we'll get to later, you're going to see these, like a Jason Statham, you're going to see these parts thicken up and they're going to become more pronounced which is going to give your head a more angular shape and the same here with these two lines it's going to give your face a more angular shape and having an angular face is key to having a masculine looking face for a man now the next point is hollow cheeks now chubby cheeks which we call cherubic cheeks is a, a feature that we is synonymous with either children babies whatever and it means that around here it's puffy. A lot of people think this is a case of body fat. You know, you lose body fat, you're going to have hollow cheeks. It helps around about 10, 15%. But here is actually called the buccinator muscle. So this area here is actually a muscle. It's like a sheet of tissue that just covers over here. And if you actually took this away, this would be completely hollow. There's very little fat here, I've been told by Mike Mew. So if it's a muscle, it acts under hypertrophy and atrophy. So use it or lose it. We've all heard that in sport. You break your leg. You don't use that leg for six months. You take the cast off. Your leg is as skinny as my little finger. Okay? And uh, the same thing happens here. So the reason everybody's going wrong is everybody's using a sucking motion to eat food. So everybody's kind of stuffing their face with too much food. This is packing out like a hamster. So these muscles are being stretched and used, which means they're getting bigger. And then when you're chewing, you're not chewing completely down to tiny morsels. And a lot of people will, let's say you've got a McDonald's or something, shove it in your mouth, you know, way too much off the first bite because you think it's tasty. Start chewing away. Face is packed up. You have to get it down somehow. You swallow and you use these muscles to force it down. So it's compressing all the food and it's pushing it down your throat. Um, and that's how most people swallow. It's almost, they call it an infantile suckle, which is... We see it a lot in Asian people. In Asian people, especially in places like China and Japan, they have very cherubic cheeks. They have round faces because that's what they're doing. There's a lot of sushi and seafood, a lot of soups, and they're swallowing in that manner, and it's making these buccinator muscles bigger than they need to be. Now, a correct swallow is... I don't know if I've got any water here. I have. Bear with me. This isn't a sponsored ad. Do you see that, guys? No movement here and here. All the movement is here. You need to swallow with the back of your throat. There needs to be no movement here. We swallow something like 2,000 times per day. It might be even more. But by, you know, by doing that 2,000 times a day or not doing it 2,000 times a day, these are going to shrink. 
these are going to get a lot smaller. So watch again. All the movement is here in the throat. Same again. So this isn't moving, this isn't moving, this isn't moving. They all have an effect on the body. And um, that's what too many, look how much I'm sweating. This is incredible. I had to close all the windows for the audio. Um, and that's what most people are doing is they're, they're swallowing in an incorrect way and they're having stuff like straws with their drinks. They're, they're slurping their food down, you know, and this isn't strong. So their face ends up turning to mush and they have like a well-rounded face, like I said, like an Asian face. And um, ideally what you want is something like a Scandinavian face. That's how you get that masculine look. And if you have the hollow cheeks, the high cheekbones and the solid jaw and it comes out a bit, you know, you're going to have that effect. Now, things that you can do right away is uh, straight eyebrows. Straight eyebrows is a great way. So when I was younger, my eyebrows used to curl right around here. I thought it looked good when I was young. You know, plenty of eyebrows space, if you would, real estate. And then I saw a picture of Sam Asghari years ago, and I remember he had his eyes, his eyebrows were like that. They were straight across. Um, and there was another guy who was a male model. He was one of the best looking men I've ever seen. I forgot his name. Um, a Hispanic guy, I can't remember now. Mario something. And... Um, his eyebrows were like that, straight across. They were just a straight line. So what I started doing is grabbing a razor blade and I just shaved upwards and I just got up to the point where they would, my eyebrows on the outside were slightly, slightly like a millimeter higher than this. So it created like a, a kind of straight line effect that was going up and out. And it gives your eyes, it gives your whole face a more masculine look. It gives you that solid long brow. I haven't done it lately, but it's an effect I do. Otherwise, my eyebrows would come right around here and that's, you know, it looks a bit clowny. It's not a very masculine look. So what I decided to do was shave it here, give it that straight line look and give my brow a lot more of a protruded effect, you know, that Neanderthal type look. And uh, it makes you look a lot more masculine. I, I think all male models are taught to do that. They're all taught to shave uh, those areas or get those areas threaded and their eyebrows are perfectly straight. It looks very good. Um, now number, I guess, eight is uh, shorter hair. Now, if you have shorter hair, it's going to bring out your features a lot more. When I was younger, when I had the option of having longer hair, um, I had the kind of Justin Bieber type queer flows of hair. It was about that long. It was incredible. And um, when I shaved it all off, I realized that I could see those lines, those lines, this line here, these lines when it's padded. If I shave it completely, you know, cheekbones look more pronounced. Your jawline looks wider because this is tucked in. Um, your brow looks wider, like this whole area looks wider, because again, this is tucked in. And there's multiple reasons to having uh, shorter hair, especially if you have a beard and stuff, that contrast in levels, because it looks, again, wider here, shorter up here. You know, and like I said, you can see the lines, you can see the definition. I just think it's a much better look if you're trying to go for that masculine look. And it's, it's also quite a tough guy look. Now, the last one is to blend your sideburns and create angles. Like I said, you guys, it's all about angles. Now, this area here, again, I haven't done it recently, but you can probably see the effect. If you've got more hair here and you've got less hair here and you blend this, then what you're going to get is thin, 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 white. You know, narrow, 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 white. So it's going to give you that. If this is all puffy as well, it's just going to give you a fat face look. You're going to look kind of Amish. Now, if you shave this down to around about the bottom of the ear line and get maybe a barber to blend this in, what you're going to get is, you know, it's maybe going outwards here with your hair, then it's coming inwards, then it's going outwards. You're going to get that angled effect and it's going to make your jawline look a lot wider. For example, if I did that, probably looks a lot wider. You know, maybe it's not a good look, but it looks a lot wider. And if I can make this thinner, then this is more pronounced, but it's still neat. Next point, guys, is to be more muscular. So you add more muscle to your frame. So, you know, you're dropping, you're dropping your body fat, but also if you can add that extra man muscle to your body, for some reason it changes your face. If you ever seen a guy before and after, you know, when he was skinny to begin with, once he whacks on that extra muscle, his face is going to look more masculine for some reason. I don't know whether it thickens up your neck. I don't know whether clenching your jaw more um, when you're lifting heavy weights is going to give you a more protruded face. But I honestly think just having that bigger frame in general just adds extra width to your face. It just makes you look wider, especially around the neck. And I think there's certainly, there's certainly muscles around your head, around your face that are going to be tensed when you're training. So I definitely think that helps. But just having, you know, if you took the same person with a baby face and you put that head on, let's say, the rock's body, that person would look a lot older. They'd look in a good way. They'd look a lot more masculine. They'd look stronger. They'd look bigger. You know, your impression of them would change immediately. 
And I think that having that kind of body has that effect. So that's the nine tips, guys, for having a more masculine face. I hope it helps. If you need any more advice, I'll uh, put the videos in at the end, the Mike New ones. Definitely learn about orthotropics. If you can just chew that gum for, let's say, three hours a day for around about a year, the effects are enormous.